it's really sad to me as an NFL fan of over 25 years to see what's happened to the importance of the running back position in the draft in recent years, more specifically the decreased importance in the position. Sure, you'll get some playmakers that will still go pretty high, but in general, running backs tend to slide on draft day. We've known this for a long time now. And maybe that's due to the increased importance of the passing game in the NFL. Maybe that's due to more teams going by a two-headed monster, running back by committee system. They just don't place the same importance on that position because they think once running backs hit the age of 29 or 30, uh, they're going to have a sharp decline in their production. So a lot of teams are hesitant to spend a high pick on a guy that they think they're only going to get seven or eight really good years out of. But a lot of teams will still go into this draft looking for a running back that can contribute. Some will be looking for a three-down starter, while others are looking maybe to a complement to something else they already have. There's one surefire, almost can't-miss prospect in this running back class, and a couple of other guys that could potentially develop into three-down NFL starters. As great as it is to have that three-down NFL running back that can do everything, some teams just aren't fortunate enough to have that. So they'll go into a draft maybe looking for somebody like a Darren Sproles type of back that could come in and be a complement to a bigger back. That could be your third down back that can catch a lot of passes out of the backfield, maybe line up in the slot, provide an impact in the kick return and punt return games. And there's a couple of guys in this draft that I think will be able to do that very well at the NFL level. That's Chris Rainey from Florida and LaMichael James from Oregon. Rainey's got a lot of speed, not a ton of size, He's a decent athlete for sure, um, not somebody that you look at and say, okay, this is a guy that's going to have 20 or 25 carries a game and be able to hold up. That's just not going to be him, but could definitely provide a spark for a team in the return game and then, again, as a weapon out of the backfield, lining them up in different spots on the offensive side of the ball. As far as LaMichael James from Oregon, in some ways I compare his skill set a little bit to Javid Best, um, now with the Detroit Lions, but before with the Cal Bears. And just like Javid Best, he has a lot of explosive playmaking ability. Um, he produced big numbers his last two years at Oregon. Even though when he went against bigger competition like SEC defenses in Auburn um, and LSU, he kind of mm, wasn't so great. But the biggest thing is a lot of people are going to probably have LaMichael James higher on their draft board because they're going to look at him in college and assume that he could be an every-down running back. And I just don't think that... A like Michael James at his size will be able to hold up consistently to a 25 carry per game workload in the NFL. Um, he could be a type of guy like a Reggie Bush, like a Darren Sproles, that could you know provide some playmaking ability, line up at the slot receiver, line up as a as a you know complementary running back, as a third down running back again, be a dynamic kick and punt returner. Um, because the one thing that Detroit found out with Javid Best, and they knew this because the next year after taking Javid Best in the first round, they took Michael LaShore from Illinois in the second round to provide a big power complement because they knew that Javid Best just wasn't physically going to be able to hold up to the workload. Unfortunately for the Lions, LaShore blew out his Achilles and missed the season. But if a team's looking for Ella Michael James and saying, you know what, in the third round, somewhere in that range, this guy could come in and provide a real spark to our offense as long as we use him in the proper role and don't overuse him, I think you'll get really good bang for your buck out of LaMichael James. A guy that I think is underrated in this running back class is Cyrus Gray from Texas A&M. Yeah, sure, he didn't exactly blow the roof off the place down there at College Station. And, in fact, he ended up being in a timeshare um, in terms of carries in the backfield. But I look at Cyrus Gray and I see a guy with decent size, pretty good speed, some playmaking ability. Um, kind of reminds me in some ways of a guy like maybe a DeMarco Murray from Oklahoma. Now, DeMarco Murray was a mid-round pick for the Dallas Cowboys and ended up being their starter by the end of the year. Now, there are serious questions about whether Cyrus Gray will be able to consistently stay healthy at the NFL level and be able to handle a full workload, but when I've watched Cyrus Gray, I have seen at least some DeMarco Murray in him, and I think anybody going and looking back at last year's draft would definitely agree now that DeMarco Murray was much better than, let's say, a fourth-round pick. And that's what I think Cyrus Gray kind of is, a guy that you'll probably take in the fourth round, bring him in as a compliment, but potentially 
plays at a level maybe like if he was a second round pick, maybe even a late first round pick. A real sleeper in this running back class, in my opinion, is Robert Turbin from Utah State. He's got very good size, very good speed for his size at running back. And he has some elusiveness, too, and some ability to catch the ball out of the backfield. Yes, he played at a smaller program, and yes, some of his skills do need to be refi refined. He may be perhaps a bit raw. But there are things I've seen about him that I really, really like. And again, when we're talking about getting great value, I look at a Robert Turbin, somebody that would potentially go in the third or fourth round because maybe he went to a Utah State and didn't get the most sure. Um, I see a guy that could potentially develop into a player that becomes a three-down back in the NFL, um, becomes a guy that can run between the tackles, is a home run threat when he's carrying the ball, and also do some damage in the receiving game. I think he could turn into a three-down running back and really be a surprise in this 2012 NFL draft. Now that I've taken a look at some other players, let me shift my focus to what I feel are the five best running back prospects for the 2012 NFL Draft. Tell me where I've heard this song and dance before. A Virginia Tech running back has a good combination of size and speed, has one really productive season, and then leaves school early for the NFL Draft when he probably could have come back and had another year. I'm sorry, I know David Wilson had a phenomenal combine where he ran really well, worked out well in some of the other drills, but I'm just normally am not a huge fan of Virginia Tech running backs, and like I've said in other videos, sometimes the school and their history at a position, um, or a coach and his history with a position, does impact the way I view a prospect, and Frank Beamer running backs just don't exactly have the greatest track record as NFL players. Maybe David Wilson's a guy that could prove me wrong. He'll probably either be the second or third running back off the board, going somewhere between maybe pick 28 to 38 in the late first, early second round. Um, but am I a huge fan? No. Could he develop into a three-down starter in the NFL? Perhaps. But like I said, just another Virginia, running, Virginia Tech running back to me, and I'm not really a big fan. Sometimes looking at a prospect at a certain position is just a matter of personal preference and maybe something that struck you that you really like. Bernard Pierce from Temple, six foot, 220 pounds. He has decent speed, at least what they timed at the combine, but I don't think he quite plays as fast as maybe he runs straight ahead. But I do see a guy that could be a between the tackles runner in the NFL. Pass catching, maybe it's something he could improve upon, but he was highly productive at Temple. Yes, granted, it was Temple, and he didn't exactly uh, blow the roof off of the joint when um, he played Penn State. He only had like 50 yards rushing. But he's a guy that I look at that will probably go in the third, maybe fourth round. But in terms of talent level, I just happen to like him more than David Wilson, and I think, if nothing else, he will be a very solid between-the-tackles, downhill power runner in the NFL that a lot of teams will love. And he should be able to start for somebody by the middle of his rookie season. Lamar Miller from the U! Comes in as the number three running back on my big board. He's five foot eleven, about 212 pounds, and he can fly. Basically, with Lamar Miller, he's big, he's strong, he could handle an extensive workload in the NFL as a ball carrier, and with his speed, is potentially a home run threat anytime he gets his hands on the ball. Now, he doesn't have a ton of experience at Miami, but in some ways that could be a positive because he doesn't have a ton of workload on his body either. The one real big question about Lamar Miller, which will cause him to drop a little bit on draft day compared to running backs like Doug Martin or David Wilson, is there are a lot of questions about whether or not Lamar Miller can catch the ball effectively out of the backfield and be a real three-down running back in the NFL. Looking at how athletic he is when he's running the ball and how much of a home run threat he is in the running game, I would have to assume at some point in time Lamar Miller would hunker down and really work on his receiving skills and become that three-down running back. And once he does that, 
I definitely think that his upside will be better than David Wilson's and almost at the level of Doug Martin's. But an NFL starting running back? Yes, I do think so. Number two on my running back big board is Doug Martin from Boise State, and I am a big fan of his. Five foot nine, two hundred and twenty pounds. A short, kind of squatty, compact built running back that not only can at some cases overpower you, he also has enough speed to sometimes run by you and enough elusiveness to get by you. He really will be a three down back in the NFL due to his abilities as a runner, both between the tackles and to the outside, his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, and he also at times showed me the ability to block at least at an effective level when he was at Boise State. So those are, you know, the three primary skills you need as a running back to be able to run the ball, to be able to catch the ball, and to be able to block in pass protection, especially with blitz pickups. So Doug Martin to me, grades out as a first-round pick. Yes, lower end of the spectrum. And I think there is a chance that unless people get so caught up in David Wilson and the speed that he has, blah, 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 um, I think Doug Martin ultimately will be, or at least should be, the second running back drafted in the 2012 draft. Where do I think he could potentially be drafted? In terms of first-round fits, you could potentially look at maybe the Denver Broncos at 25. Hey, you've got Peyton Manning. No, Sean Moreno hasn't exactly worked out. One way to protect a, run, a quarterback is to give him a running game, even though Peyton would not use it nearly enough. Um, the Green Bay Packers at 28. I think if they look at it from a best player on the board available standpoint and Doug Martin is there and a lot of the maybe three, four outside linebackers that they were looking at are gone, would strongly consider bringing in a guy like Martin and put him in the backfield with Aaron Rodgers and really give them another weapon and another facet to that explosive Packer offense. You could even potentially maybe see Doug Martin go 31 to the Patriots or 32 to the New York Giants. If he does drop to the second round, I don't think he'll drop too far. He's too good of an overall talent. He proved that to me at Boise State. He'll be a three-down running back in the NFL and a damn good one. Then we get to the unquestioned number one running back prospect in the 2012 NFL Draft. And some may potentially argue the number one prospect in this draft period, and that's Trent Richardson from Alabama. He's five foot 10, 230 pounds. He's built like a little mini Sherman tank. Not only is he strong, he's very explosive. This guy can move. He's got jets, making him a great between-the-tackle running threat and also making him a great home run threat every time he touches the ball due to his uh, great speed. I've also seen at times him demonstrate the ability to be quite an effective pass receiver out of the backfield, even though he didn't get the most chances of that at Alabama. And I saw him at times be able to pick up the blitz effectively and at least hold his own in pass protection. Although, if you're drafting a Trent Richardson in the top five, which is where he's going in this draft, or at least he should, you're not drafting him for his pass protection skills. So that's icing on the cake. You're drafting him first and foremost as a ball carrier, and he's a damn good one. I've heard a lot of comparisons saying that he's the best running back prospect since Adrian Peterson in the 2007 draft. And I agree with that. I look at him and I say that Trent Richardson's floor is Marshawn Lynch, which is still a very good, productive NFL running back. And his ceiling very well could be Adrian Peterson. Because as big and strong as AP is, maybe his single best skill is just how fast he is when you combine that size in there. Who should tra take Trent Richardson? Excuse me. Maybe you'll hear some rumblings about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers trying to trade up to number three with the Vikings, swap places to take Richardson. Um, I could have argued before they traded down that St. Louis should have just stayed at number two, and if they didn't take a quarterback because Sam Bradford sucks dick, that they should have taken Richardson. Um, I would expect the absolute lowest that Trent Richardson will drop in this draft, no matter what, is the St. Louis Rams at number six, and I highly doubt he's going to end up there. But the bottom line is, I look at Trent Richardson, and I see a guy that will be a 25 carry per game back in the NFL, be able to hurt you as a pass receiver, and should be, unless something freakishly bad happens, be the 2012 NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year.